and welcome to Catalan News. Who's gathering more support to become the next Catalan president? Pro-independence parties want Carles Puigdemont, who is still in Belgium, to be re-elected. But unionist parties frontally reject the idea of swearing him in at a distance. Today, the new parliament president, Roger Turrent, started a round of talks with political leaders to discuss the upcoming investiture debate. Here at Catalan News, we'll get you the latest on this and on a day in which we've also learned how much the police operation to crack down on the independence referendum cost. Brace yourselves, 87 million euros. Roger Torrent knows there's no time to lose. The new Catalan parliament president has been in the post for only 24 hours, but has already seen the leaders of four of the seven political groups in the chamber. Negotiations are underway to set a date for the debate to swear in a new Catalan president, following the Spanish government sacking the last cabinet after the declaration of independence. And after more than a month of the parliament being almost empty, activity in the hemicycle is up and running again. One day after being appointed, the new president of the parliament has already started the traditional round of talks with the party leaders. Today he met with the leaders of Catalonia in Common, the Catalan Socialists, the PP and the Coup Party. He will now go on to liaise with the remaining three party leaders as he tries to hold all the meetings today and tomorrow, so that a date for the debate to choose a president can be set as soon as possible. At this point, Carles Puigdemont remains the most likely candidate to be sworn in as president, as he has the most votes in the majority pro-independence bloc. While it is still far from certain whether he will be able to take office at a distance, the parliament president did not rule the option out. Si en aquest cas és el president Puigdemont, el candidat que té més consens al seu voltant, doncs evidentment haurem de parlar de com s'afronta aquesta investidura. Yet the Spanish government insisted that it will use all means possible to prevent Puigdemont from acting as president from Brussels. Y desde luego nosotros vamos a adoptar todo tipo de medidas y todo tipo de decisiones para que esa investidura eh, no se produzca. Meanwhile, Vice President Uriol Junqueras will file an appeal in the Spanish Supreme Court after the judge handling his case turned down his request for transfer to a Catalan prison and permission to attend Parliament. As for Together for Catalonia, it has asked that its MPs in Brussels, including Puigdemont, be allowed to cast a proxy vote in Parliament. Now, one of the main tasks of the Parliament Bureau will be to study the petitions and come to a decision. Carles Puigdemont cannot set foot in Catalonia without risking being arrested and, so far, none of the unionist parties are prepared to allow him being voted in from Brussels. This is what they said to the Catalan Parliament President today after their meetings. Uh, seria un error pretendre una investidura d'algú que no està a la cambra i que no es podria, per tant, dedicar i exercir en plenitud les, les responsabilitats que li haurien estat conferides. Davant del fet de que sembla que l'únic candidat que hi ha sobre la taula si el senyor Puigdemont, eh, entenem que, eh, que aquesta no és una proposta viable d'investidura. De la delegación de voto de los huidos de la justicia no puede admitirse ni se admitiría en ningún parlamento democrático del mundo. Que la presidència del Parlament i la mesa del Parlament es posi al servei de la democràcia i dels drets polítics i democràtics, encara que això impliqui eh, generar un conflicte amb l'estat espanyol. I si al final doncs, els partits independentistes acabessin fent la proposta de Carles Puigdemont, voldria dir que, 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 que tenen la voluntat de seguir instal·lats en el conflicte. Pictures of police violence cracking down on the October 1st Catalan independence referendum were seen around the world. Riot police smashed their way into polling stations, beating up those in their way and taking away ballot boxes. Old ladies were seen being dragged down by agents, tear gas was used in a very small town and rubber bullets were fired. Around 1,000 people were injured and a man even lost an eye. Today, we have learned how much money the Spanish government spent to stop Catalans from voting. 87 million euros. This is the cost of the Spanish police operation against the independence referendum in Catalonia held on October 1st last year. The figure was provided today by the Spanish Home Affairs Minister at the Senate. In comparison, the Catalan government could have allocated 6 million euros for organizing the referendum according to the Spanish justice system. That is 14 times less than the total cost of the police intervention. 
The money accounts for the cost of deploying 4,500 police officers and up to 6,000 on the days surrounding the vote. Some stayed at Barcelona port in an iconic ship decorated with Looney Tunes cartoons. While Zoido praised Spanish National Police and the Guardia Civil, he criticized Catalonia's own law enforcement agency, the Mossos de Squadra, and accused them of being absolutely passive on the day of the vote. Zoido also dismissed all claims of police using excessive force against voters. Un uso mínimo y proporcionado de la fuerza, evitando cualquier exceso en su empleo. Y en ningún caso la actuación policial tuvo como objetivo a los votantes ni a los ciudadanos que se encontraban en la zona. International organizations have repeatedly criticized the excessive use of force on referendum day with Human Rights Watch highlighting it in the Watchdog's World Report of 2018. Many people, not only in Catalonia, reacted against the police violence on social media. The outcry was significant and discontent with the Spanish police behavior led many to criticize their role or urge them to leave Catalonia. Today, a man that tweeted that Spain was becoming like hell had to testify in court. A Catalan high school teacher, Manel Riu, is accused of hate speech for his tweets and Facebook posts criticizing Spain, government members and the Guardia Civil police. Over a hundred people escorted him to court in Tremp, west of Catalonia, where he denied any wrongdoing and asked for the case to be dismissed. According to him, the aim of the prosecution is to instill fear in people to prevent them from freely expressing their discontent. El que no negat és cap dels tweets ni els fets que van passar. Els fets que van passar realment, no tal com expliquen eh, els guàrdies civils a l'atestat, que ells com a persones podien ser les persones més encantadores, que això no ho discutia, però que aquell dia 7 d'octubre portaven l'uniforme de la vergonya i que per tant era una vergonya. Això no ho he negat. Let's move on now to economy. Having a roof over one's head is one of the most basic human necessities. Everybody needs shelter and a place to hide away from the cold, but sometimes this can be costly, especially in areas of gentrification. According to a study released today, rental prices in Catalonia continued to rise in 2017. The average rent for a property rose by 10% last year, working out as about 12 euros per square meter, 52% higher than in the rest of Spain. Unsurprisingly, the Catalan capital, Barcelona, was the most expensive place to rent. Following the trend of many major cities throughout the world, prices in Barcelona increased in 8 out of the 10 districts studied. According to experts, buy-to-let properties and the boom in tourist rentals are pushing prices up. Now, let's take a look at Catalan culture. A new exhibit is opening soon, one ideal for art lovers who might want to travel outside Barcelona, maybe even to the picturesque Costa Brava. This to see a collection of art that transgresses traditional limits and faces the international. Xavier Escrivà creates paintings that have volume. In his work, colorful linen falls over itself, making a sculpture-like shapes while technically being painted on canvas. The display can be found at the contemporary sculpture Can Mario Museum in the northern coastal town of Palafrugell. The exhibit's name, however, is French, Eloge d'Amour. This name reflects the artist's origins as well as his current work. Born in Paris, Escriba was trained in fine arts both in the French and the Catalan capitals. He lives in Catalonia but has had his art shown around the world. This international gaze is also found in another part of the exhibition, commentaries about the artist's work from those closest to him. These contributions come from 17 individuals working in different fields, musicians, teachers and scientists with origins in different countries. This is because the artist wants to show not only his art, but the second part of the process too, how it is received. And this is also something he offers to visitors. Well, it's true that I like to teach all the moments I've lived. I like to teach all the faces. That's why we often see the front, the front, the front, the front, the front. That the spectator can recreate it, make it his own film too, and how it's been the procedure. Escriba's work is on display alongside that of Chita Forn, born in Barcelona. This exhibit is called The Beauty of the Human Form and shows Forn abstract art through movement, who, and light within her paintings. In recent years, though, the artist has focused on the human body, looking for a balance between the figurative and the abstract. 
Both exhibits will be opening on January the 20th, their doors open until mid-May. And with this, we finish today's show. Before we go, we want to recommend another exhibition to you, this one in Barcelona. It's about how two great Catalan artists worked together and learned from one another, Joan Miró and ceramicist Josep Llorenç Artigas. Enjoy and see you tomorrow. <laughs>